Hi guys. How are you all today morning? Good morning. Today is 24th October 2023. My name is T S V Raghavan and I live in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. This is my spiritual vlog on YouTube. Har Dhan, H A R D A N, Har Dhan, Hari Bol, T R S V, Nectar, N E C T A R, Nectar. In this particular vlog, in all my previous videos, we have been discussing about the knowledge and information that we have gleaned through the study of spiritual books, scriptures, contemplation on the material universe, and meditation on the spiritual universe. This particular video in this vlog is no exception to that rule. In fact, it is a mere continuation of all that we have been doing in all my previous videos. Kindly subscribe to this vlog and press the bell icon so that I may keep reminding you of all my previous, present and future videos. So let us continue with the topic of discussion for today's video. Today we shall talk about what one very great man the French emperor of the 18th and 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte said about success and achievement in the life of any human living entity, whether male or female. He said that the secret of success in the life of every individual living entity lies on the basis of three major factors which are needed by every living entity to succeed in life. To achieve something, to create something and to achieve the crown of success in every endeavor, according to the great Napoleon Bonaparte, there are three major factors. They are as follows. Limitless ambition. One should have limitless amount of ambition to dream, to plan, to strategically execute his or her plans to achieve something. For that, he needs the second factor, that is, he or she needs the second factor. The second factor is ceaseless industry. According to Swami Vivekananda, Arise, awake, sleep not till the goal is reached. That is, to achieve something, you have to do ceaseless industry. And that is what is known as Karma Yoga, according to Lord Krishna of Srimad Bhagavad Gita of the Hindu mythology. According to him, when the 
barren indraprastha land was given to the five pandava princes he said this barren land is your karma bhumi you have to do karma yoga to make it very priceless fertile and successful this barren land is in our own life in every human living entity's lifetime we have a barren land called our own life in a lifetime according to karma yoga we must ceaselessly strive to achieve whatever we dreamt about as a part of our own ambition that is the secret of achievement and the third is above all this it is a determination to succeed we must all allow our own purpose our own ambition our own dreams to grow inside us ourselves in such a way that it becomes a part and parcel of our own psyche we start living our dreams our ambitions and our wishes to achieve create or succeed in something or some job only then we can do ceaseless industry to achieve that particular purpose in life this is applicable to every living entity whether male or female whether he or she belongs to any part and place in this world whether he or she belongs to any race caste creed community color taste preferences whims fantasies religion etc whether that person is a white a black a brown a yellow or any other such person if he or she wants to achieve something he or she will have to practice these three very important factors to create or achieve that there have been several examples in history which have proved this point time and again even napoleon bonaparte was born into an humble soldier's family in an island called corsica in its capital ajaccio at that time no one could have thought that he would reach such dizzy heights napoleon was like all other simplings of his and his friends however when he started growing up slowly but steadily he started to think differently he started to develop a particular group or focus in a particular direction which he thought was his own own purpose in life at that time he used to read a book called true talks life it was a book which mentioned the lives of other great men who had been born and achieved many things even before napoleon was born napoleon was very interested while reading this book and slowly but steadily these factors grew into him and he never knew about it just because of this he developed a dream and this dream slowly turned into ambition because of that 
he started to achieve mastery over his own psychic cerebral faculties and his own capabilities to achieve his own purpose according to what had impressed him while reading Puta's life. That made him a brilliant student in the military school of Brian, where he studied maths, science, history, politics and other subjects which gave him a very good idea about how to achieve something that he had dreamt about. Because Napoleon Bonaparte was always thinking about his own aim, and he forgot about other luxuries and comforts of life. This particular ambition had become a groove or a center point in his own life, as a result of which all his cerebral faculties, his brain, his mind, his intelligence, logic, senses, etc. were focused towards that bull's eye. This, according to Napoleon Bonaparte, is the secret of his own success. It is true that because of this, he proved to be first a very good corporal, then a soldier, a sergeant, a general, a first consul, and ultimately the emperor of France. All this he achieved within a matter of 52 years of his life, of which six last years were spent in exile in St. Helena, where he had been put by the British forces. For all practical purposes, Napoleon achieved whatever he did only in around 20 years of his 52 years of life. Before that, he was nothing, and after that, he was forced to be nothing. Same is the case with several spiritual leaders and materialistic leaders who achieved DC heights because of their own limitless ambition, a sense of purpose in life, ceaseless industry and a determination to succeed. Swami Yogananda Paramhansa, the man who founded the Yogoda Satsang Society of India, once told his own followers and devotees in America. They were going through a lot of hardship during that time. But he smiled and said, You can do one thing to at least forget this hardship. They asked him, What is it? He said, Focus on your own purpose in life and work hard. Same was the case with Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda believe it or not, was rejected by every company in Kolkata during that man's younger days where he went <coughs> for an interview for a job as a clerk. You may find it incredible, but he was told, you neither have the talent nor the intelligence and above all the looks to qualify as a clerk in our company. So much so that after Swami Vivekananda, whose original name was Narendra Ghosh, was rejected in interviews by various companies, this guy seriously contemplated 
to commit suicide. He was dissuaded from this by his own friends who told him to hang on. This is not new. This even happened to the great Napoleon Bonaparte. This guy was standing atop a river to jump inside to commit suicide at one particular juncture when suddenly one friend came to him and gave him some money which he could send to his family for their daily livelihood. This unexpected gesture from the friend helped this world get a Napoleon Bonaparte. Swami Bhakti Vedanta, the founder of ISKCON, believe it or not, tried several times to find a society called ISKCON and that too in his own native country, India. He tried to form this society in Jhansi, Agra, Kolkata and other places where either it was of no avail or it succeeded only temporarily. He did not get as many followers as he would have got otherwise. He was already 66, sorry, already 70 when in the year 1966 he sailed for the first time in his 70 years abroad. That is, it was the first time that he was making a foreign trip. Believe it or not, at that time he was suffering from heart trouble, blood pressure and diabetes. Despite this, just because he had a divine purpose in his mind and this had grown into himself and his sight over the years, so this old man decided to sail to America where he lived under very humble circumstances in a place called Harlem in New York. Even then, he found very good friends and well wishers in this foreign country where he hardly knew the people, whether they were Americans or not. These people supported this old man and he started his own society called International Society for Krishna Consciousness that is ISKCON in the year 1966 in Lo and Behold, America, that is the United States of America. This was the first seed he sold in a foreign land for Krishna Consciousness and how it grew into an international banyan tree with at least 108 temples all around the world. Not only that, this 70-year-old man in the last 10 years of his life made 14 trips around the world to give religious discourses and build temples. He was received very kindly and happily and devotedly by foreigners while Indians were probably grossly unaware of his very existence. This man was supported by these foreigners who liked him more than his own countrymen 
with whom he had lived for 70 years. Bhakti Vedanta passed on at the age of 81 in India in a place called Vrindavan, but yet he would accept, acknowledge and believe that he was given so much support not by his own countrymen but by the people around the world. It is another matter that after his own demise, the Indians have at last come to acknowledge this very great transcendental and divine person and they consider him something of a God-man. The fact remains that Swami Bhakti Vedanta has built a cult which is progressing and thriving and flourishing all around the world quite successfully. Same is the case with several great men. There was one person called Abbot Swami who was born on 15th November in Baluchistan. This person was spiritually inclined and this was in the pre-independence India at the time of the British colonial rule. This person relocated from his own place of Abbottabad in Baluchistan and came to a place called Haryana in India. Haryana was actually a part of Punjab during that period. It was called the Punjab province. This man started his own religious cult called Dera Satya Sauda in India at a time when he was ailing and getting old in age. Despite that, this which happened in the early 20th century is still a striving or thriving, sorry, not striving, thriving and successful religious and spiritual organization which has several crores of followers in India and probably abroad. This was possible only because this Abbot Swami had a sense of purpose for which he strived relentlessly and had a determination to succeed in his own endeavors to start a spiritual organization. This has happened even in business, commerce and other such walks of life. There have been cases where very great men who ultimately succeeded in business, commerce and industry had to start their lives in very humble circumstances. We will take the example of one such person called Mr. Dhiru Bhai Ambani. This boy was the second son among the three of a humble schoolmaster from a place called Chorwar in Gujarat. So much so that this boy who had been born with an aim to make it big in the business world as his sole purpose began his career at the age of nine by sell selling Gujarati savories in nearby towns and markets and several carnivals, exhibitions, etc. This was his 
very very humble beginning in fact he was educated only up to the 10th standard and he had to suddenly become a school dropout because of his, the untimely demise of his own father after that this guy went to edel where he worked as a petrol pump attendant then a clerk and then a manager of a petrol pump while he earned money for his family he also learned rapidly because of his own purpose in life he learned whatever he wanted to achieve his ultimate purpose after this in 1959 this guy relocated to india where he and his family moved to a city called bombay which is now mumbai and which is a commercial hub and capital of the state of maharashtra in india here also he began humbly by becoming a yarn trader who used to hawk his products on the street for several years it was in the year 1966 that he started his own flagship company called reliance did that company with his own experience hard work ambition determination and above all friendship with a person called murli deva deva who was already a politician in the congress government which was ruling in india this guy went and met the prime minister of india mrs indira gandhi where there is a will there is a way mr dhiru bhai amani had limitless ambition and he was putting in ceaseless industry just because he had a determination to succeed in his own purpose in life this man's way of life and his own business and purpose in life were joined together in such a way that he began living his own purpose in life so much so that after looking at his own dedication interested parties started getting attracted to him and soon enough he was building mills and factories in gujarat maharashtra in or in other places in the country but this man did not stop here actually while he was working as a petrol pump attendant clerk and manager he had the dreams of refining petrol and then hunt it down and sell it in distribution markets all around india and abroad in i have been wrong in telling you first he hunted for petrol sites got raw crude oil refined it and then he started distributing the same through his own outlets in india and abroad so much so that mr thiru bhai amani is one of the rarest of the rare who started as a humble son of a school teacher and ultimately died as not just a successful businessman but as an internationally renowned business magnate and tycoon 
we must all take a leaf out of the life of such very very great men which will give us a sense of purpose in life just like the book Poussac's life gave to Mr. Napoleon Bonaparte the emperor of France in the 18th century we must not be ashamed of unabashedly emulating such very great men so that we may also try to be as positive and as great as these great people in all walks of life whether it is material or spiritual we need these factors to achieve something to create something and to become icons in the society for the others to emulate us this must be the sole purpose for us in this world kindly remember that once we reach saturation point of success in the material world we may try to get spiritual when we were materialistically inclined we were contemplating on life in the universe but when we get spiritual we must slowly slip into meditation the aim is to realize our true self as the spirit soul not as the living entity that we think we are once we realize our true self the next step is to get liberated from this repeated cycle of birth and death in this material world of birth and death and then finally get delivered to the supreme personality of god has a fully mature evolved mature experience and capable spirit soul this is all i wanted to speak about in this introductory part of my talk on these three factors in this video kindly let me know what you think of my talk on this particular matter please give me your own expert views thoughts opinions and ideas so that i may blend everything together for the sake of this society before concluding let me remind you that i am also a published author with amazon kindle and paperback i write on spiritualism fiction and assorted subjects spiritualism happens to be my favorite subject till we meet in my next video it is good morning from tsv raghavan